happy day students today we are going to discuss social science grade 9 geography chapter 1 india size and location in this chapter we are going to read about important headings like india's location size india and the world and its neighbors now this is a mind map of the content we are going to cover in the chapter here you see that we are going to learn about the location of India in the globe. When we speak about location, we are going to talk about the latitudinal and the longitudinal extent of India. The size, we are going to refer to the coastline along with the islands and without the islands and the total mass of India. In India and the world, we are going to discuss about India's eminent position in the Indian Ocean and its connection with the rest of the world. India's neighbors, we are going to read about the neighboring countries of India, the borders of those countries that are touching India and the borders of those countries that are not touching India. Now the first subtopic we are going to talk about is location. You know very well India is a vast country. Now the globe is divided into four hemispheres to, just to be clear to recapitulate what you learnt in the previous lesson. That is the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, eastern hemisphere and western hemisphere. Okay, northern, southern, eastern and western. Now India lies in the northern hemisphere and to be more specific for you to create a mental picture, it is in the northeastern hemisphere. Okay, now the latitudinal extent of India is 8 degrees 4 minutes north and 37 degrees 6 minutes north. Whenever you are writing the latitudinal extent of India, please do not forget to write it is north because you know very well it is in the northern hemisphere. So, north N is present. Longitudinal extent 68 degrees 7 minutes east and 97 degrees 25 minutes east. As I told before, it is in northeastern hemisphere. That is why east E is appearing. Now, the Tropic of Cancer, one of the important lines of latitude, it divides the country, India, but not into equal halves, but almost two equal halves. Okay. So, now we have seen the latitudinal extent, longitudinal extent and the line of latitude that passes through India. Now, India not only has the main part, the main land, we also have got islands which we should not forget. Okay, so to the southeast in the, uh, is the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal and to the southwest of the mainland we have the Lakshadweep Islands in the Arabian Sea. Now let us go to the land mass of India. Now the land mass of India, uh, of India it has an area of 3.28 million square kilometers. 3.28 million square kilometers okay now india's total area accounts for about 2.4 percent of the total geographical area of the world okay now that means india is the seventh largest country of the world now let us go into in the borderline the coastline India has a land boundary of about 15,200 kilometers and the total length of coastline of the mainland including the islands. I am talking about Andaman and Nicobar plus the Lakshadweep if we include the total length of the coastline is 7,516.6 kilometers. You, when you are preparing for the exam all these details like 2.4 percent of total geographical area. 3.28 million square uh, uh, square kilometers and the land boundary including the islands have to be memorized. This is a picture of something called as the standard meridian. You would have all heard the terminology IST, Indian Standard Time, correct? Indian Standard Time you would have heard. Now let us see, let us learn more into what is meant by this Indian Standard Time. Now, if you take from Gujarat to Ar Arunachal Pradesh, so I am talking about from west of India, 
okay to east of india so from gujarat to arunachal pradesh there is a time lag it's not exactly the same time though you ring up to a person in gujarat and arunachal pradesh and you ask them the time they might tell exactly the same time but if you see the longitudinal extent which influences the time duration of day and night okay remember the lo the latitudinal extent and the longitudinal extent influences the duration of day and light okay gujarat and arunachal pradesh have got a time lag of 2 hours 2 hours difference will be there from gujarat and arunachal pradesh but we can't follow this difference in time because if you want to make plans for uh, railway station train arrival and departure and flights arrival and departure if each state is having a different time then it becomes very difficult to for us to make a time table so we have decided we need to follow one common time for entire india which we call as ist indian standard time so which time can we take as standard time we have chosen the standard meridian that means meridian means what longitude we have chosen one particular longitude which is 82 here it is written 82 degrees 30 minutes east latitude longitude longitude passing through mirzapur in uttar pradesh it is taken as a standard meridian 82 and 82 degrees 30 minutes east longitude longitude passing through mirzapur in uttar pradesh is taken as standard meridian for the whole country why this particular longitude we have chosen why not other longitude because if you see it is almost in the center of india this longitude is in the center of india now again you are going to think that how can this be center in the in the image if you see it is not passing through jammu and kashmir madhya pradesh or any other place how you can say it is in the center of india now you have to see that the latitudinal and the longitudinal extent of mainland is about 30 degrees if you consider the number of latitudes and longitudes that are appearing from the north to south and east to west it is 30 degrees so basically when we calculate this particular longitude uh, is in the center passing through almost the center of india and the for time that is present along this longitude meridian is taken as the standard time for india which is a standard ist time taken now as we move on to the next slide we are going to read about india and the world now listen to the statement i am making the central location of india at the head of the indian ocean is considered of great importance why why is it so out of all the oceans that are present why only one particular ocean is named after a country indian ocean we need to understand the strategic location of india in the indian ocean now if you take the indian landmass has a central location between the east and the west asia india is a southward extension of the asian continent the trans indian ocean routes which connect the countries of europe in the west of the countries of east asia they provide a central location to india note that the deccan peninsula protrudes into the indian ocean helping india to establish co close contacts with the west asia africa and europe from the western coast okay from the western coast with southeast and east asia from the eastern coast no other country has a long coastline on the indian ocean as india has and therefore it is india's imminent position in the indian ocean which justifies the naming of an ocean after it clear now let us move on to india's contacts with the world India's contacts with the world is older than her maritime contacts. Her means I'm referring to India. Okay, maritime contacts means the trade that went on through water, water transport. Okay, you know very well when the Europeans came to India to colonize India, all that we can go in the history. So when they established contacts with India through waterways. 
So now we need not think that India's contact with the rest of the world started only with these Europeans coming to India. If we take the contacts of India with the, with the rest of the world, it is much older than maritime contacts. So if waterways were not there, how did we contact with the rest of the world is what I am going to talk about. India's contact with the world has continued through ages. Okay, that we cannot deny. But her relationship through the land routes are much older than the maritime contacts. How the various passes across the mountains in the north. See the various passes across the mountains in the north. Okay, have provided passengers pathway. Okay, while the oceans restricted such interaction for a very long time, people moved along these pathways. Okay, before initially waterways were not used. Okay, now these roads have contributed in the exchange of various things. Now what? That is what we are going to see here. Result, okay, people have traveled. It is older than maritime. They have traveled through various passes in the mountains. Why did they do that? What is the purpose? What is the re uh, result? Did the rest of the world benefit? Did India benefit out of it? We are going to read just few ideas that were exchanged. Okay. These routes have contributed in exchange of ideas. Okay. And commodities since ancient time. See for example if you take ideas of Upanishads and the Ramayana. The stories of Panchatantra, okay, the Indian numerals and the decimal system, they could reach many parts of the world. So, we are talking about what benefits the rest of the world had out of India because of these trade relations. So, what benefit did we have? We also should have benefit, okay. So, for that, on the other hand, the influence of Greek sculpture and the architectural styles of their minarets and domes from the West Asia can be seen in different parts of the country. That means through these passes we have given to the world and we have taken from the world. Understood? This is what India's contacts with the world are. Here I have shown you a map of India and all the neighboring countries of India and here you see the boundaries of few neighboring countries are touching the Indian boundary. Whereas the boundaries of few are not touching India. Therefore, now we are going to see India's neighbors. Okay. We know very well that India occupies an important strategic location in South, uh, uh, South Asia. Let us see. India shares its land boundaries. So, now I am talking about the countries whose boundaries are touching the Indian boundary. Okay. So, India shares its land boundaries with Pakistan, Afghanistan in the northwest, China, Nepal and Bhutan in the north and Myanmar and Bangladesh in the east. Our southern neighbors across the sea consist of two island countries namely can you guess? I think it should not be that difficult. Sri Lanka and Maldives. Sri Lanka is separated from India. Sri Lanka here is separated from India by a narrow channel of sea formed by Park Strait and Gulf of Manar. But whereas if you take Maldives, Maldives are situated to the south of Lakshadweep Islands. Okay. India has had strong geographical and historical links with their neighbors. Okay. Look at the physical map of Asia in your atlas later on and note how India stands apart from rest of Asia. It's a very, very small lesson, correct? So, with this, we come to the end of the lesson.